Lots of people, me included, prefer macOS over Windows for a variety of reasons. The first one being proprietary apps such as Logic Pro X and Final Cut Pro, as well as the look and feel of macOS, which is why many people prefer it over Windows. However, Apple charges a lot for the premium of their products and the price to performance is often very low compared to the Windows counterparts. That's why the idea of a Hackintosh was created. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own custom Hackintosh like the one right behind me and have a fully functional Mac OS on an unsupported PC. And you'll be quite surprised to see the performance numbers. Let's get started. First, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a PC with an Intel CPU and an AMD GPU, preferably. You can use AMD CPUs and NVIDIA GPUs, however, those are not technically supported by Apple since they do not use them in any of their products. So, you will often have outdated drivers, you won't be able to use the latest OS, and there often isn't a lot of support for those things. You'll also be taking a performance hit by going with an AMD CPU because there are some things that need to be tweaked in order for it to work. You'll also need access to a real Mac, which is kind of an automatic deterrent for some people. Now I know what you're thinking, isn't the point of a Hackintosh to not have to buy a product from Apple? Well, unfortunately, it's really hard to create a Mac OS bootable install media without a real Mac, both for the install media as well as formatting the USB. Any real Mac will work as long as it has internet connection. So here's what's in my Hackintosh rig currently. I have a 4-core, four 4-thread four i5-6600K, and a Gigabyte H110M-A Micro ATX motherboard, and a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo to cool it. 8 gigabytes of DDR4 2666 MHz RAM, a Corsair CX600 power supply, a 240 gigabyte SSD, a Sapphire Nitro RX 480 4 gigabyte graphics card, and a Deepcool Matrix 30 case. Now let's go ahead and get started with creating the install media that will allow us to make macOS boot on the PC. First, you're going to need an 8 gigabyte drive or higher available to you. Start by opening up terminal on your Mac and entering the following command, disk util list. Take note of the dev slash disk number on the left hand side of the terminal and make sure you absolutely know it is the right one as we are about to erase everything on it. It will say external comma physical in parentheses if it is a USB drive and also check that it is the correct size as well. Next, type the following command, disk util partition disk slash dev slash disk and then the disk number from before GPT JHFS plus in quotes USB 100%. Press Y and enter when prompted and it will begin erasing. Next, you're going to need to download the latest version of macOS from the App Store. Once that is done, enter the following command sudo slash application slash install macOS and then your version of macOS.app slash contents slash resources slash create installed media dash dash volume slash volume slash USB. This is gonna take some time, so just be patient and wait, and it will tell you when it is done. Now we have a bootable install media that we can use on supported Macs, but not on supported ones. In order to do this, we have to use something called Clover. You will need the following things which are in the description. Clover install package and Clover configurator. Open up Clover install package, and when prompted, press install location and select your USB stick. You'll also want to customize the installation only if you have a non-Z370 300 series motherboard from Intel. So if you have an H370 or Z390 motherboard or any other 300 series motherboard that is not a Z370 board, you will want to press customize and find emu variable UEFI-64 under UEFI drivers and then additional drivers. Then press install and it will be done fairly quickly. Next, we're going to need to download some Kex or kernel extensions. You can kind of think of them as drivers. We're going to need the following ones that are down in the description below. Apple ALC, fake SMC, and all related kecks in the folder. There are going to be multiple. Lilu, USB inject all, whatever green, and lastly, an ethernet driver. This depends on what kind your motherboard has. So down below, I'll have a link to an ethernet kext guide that will help you determine which one you need. You will need to know who makes your ethernet port on your motherboard, which can usually be found on the manufacturer's website. Once they have downloaded, unzip them and find all the .kext files. We only need the .kext files, nothing else, not the .dsim files. Take all of those and place them into a folder. This will make it really easy for us to just copy and paste them into our Clover bootloader. Next, fire up Clover Configurator from before and navigate to Mount EFI. Find the EFI for your USB stick under EFI Partitions and then press Mount Partition. Then click on Open Partition and navigate to EFI, then Clover, then Kex, then Other, and paste all of the Kex that you had from before into there. 
Now we need to edit the config.plist file. Depending on which generation Intel CPU you have, there are different instructions for each. In order to find this file, you will need to go to EFI, then Clover, and then right click on config.plist and then open it with text edit. Link down below is a GitHub repository that will give you all of the files that you need for your config.plist file. If you have a third generation CPU, you will need to find the Ivy Bridge folder. If you have a fourth generation, you'll want Haswell. If you have a sixth generation like me, you'll want Skylake. If you have a seventh generation, you'll want KB Lake. If you want an eighth generation, you'll want Coffee Lake. Copy and paste the code in the folder into your config file and then save it. Eject your USB stick and you should be ready to start installing. Fire up your PC and make sure secure boot is disabled. Then select your USB stick to boot off of, but make sure it is the UEFI version, not the regular version. This will load Clover for the first time. Press enter when the interface appears and then wait until the Apple installer appears. Press undisk utility and then press view and then show all volumes. Select your SSD or hard drive and press erase. Make sure it is formatted as Mac OS Extended Journaled and GUID Partition Map. Then exit Disk Utility by clicking on the name in the left hand corner and pressing quit. Next, click on Install Mac OS and install it on your SSD. Once that is done, restart your machine and boot off of your UEFI USB again. This time, boot off of Install Mac OS on your disk name, for example, Install Mac OS on Entitled, which should be the last option, using the arrow keys to navigate and pressing Enter when it's been selected. Then the setup process will begin. Once you are in macOS, download Clover Configurator and fire it up. Go to Mount EFI and mount both EFI partitions shown. Open Finder and click on the EFI partition that has the eject symbol next to it. Copy the EFI folder onto your desktop, then go to the other EFI drive that does not have the eject symbol and copy the files from your desktop onto that drive, clicking merge when the prompt occurs. Delete the Apple folder if it's present as this can cause issues with booting. After that, you can shut down the computer and remove the USB stick. Boot back up and set the UEFI partition of your SSD to the default boot and then boot up. Select macOS on your drive name, such as macOS on Untitled in Clover, and then you should be in macOS once again. Now let's do some performance testing and I'll just throw some numbers up on here in some graphs comparing it to other actual real Mac products. So that's going to wrap up today's video on making your own custom Hackintosh. If you did enjoy, leave a like, subscribe down below, and make sure that you comment if you have any questions or just want to know a little more about this system. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.